Hello everyone, welcome to Knowledge India once again. In this tutorial, we are going to see how to launch RDS on AWS. RDS is a relational database service and it is a managed service which AWS gives you. You do not have to uh, worry about installing your database on a machine. You do not have to take care of uh, regular backups, etc. All of such things are managed. In addition to that, uh, other things like any patch management and all are also taken care of by Amazon for you. So <coughs> let us go ahead and launch an RDS uh, instance here. So when you choose RDS, uh, you have got six engines currently. You have uh, MySQL, MariaDB, which is taken from MySQL and uh, created further, and uh, Aurora as well. Uh, earlier Aurora used to have only MySQL, uh, it was only MySQL compatible recently uh, during the reinvent PostgreSQL uh, compatibility also uh, has been launched now. You have got Oracle, PostgreSQL and its uh, uh, actual format, you have SQL Server etc. So we will go ahead and uh, in this tutorial we are trying to see how to launch RDS and what are some of the best practices how to launch it in multi AC mode. Okay, So let us go ahead and create a mysql database now this is just for recommendation uh, for production scenarios it is recommended that you choose multi easy deployment if you are just doing a development you can go ahead and do single easy what is the difference between two i'll just explain you that so i'm going to do a multi easy i'll move forward <coughs> and you can see uh, in this case there is just simple general license you do not pay anything for the license as such you can choose different world from different version of MySQL, which one do you want? Go ahead and choose. Let us choose the latest one. And then you can choose the instance type. Uh, as we do, as we choose instance type during EC2 launch, in the same way, you have instance types here as well, which specifies that how much CPU and RAM your uh, database server would have. Okay. So this small one uh, for the demo purpose, I'm just going to choose micro itself. And then do I want to do multi AZ? I'll just say yes. What type of storage do I want? Do I want magnetic or uh, solid state uh, uh, devices? So I'll choose general purpose SSD and just on the recommendation, I'll go ahead and put it as 100 GB. Uh, we need to give an uh, identifier. I'm just going to call it demo DB uh, and a master username and password. So with this username and password, you would be able to do uh, any changes you want on this particular db instance just one more step so you can see we are there on the fourth step and after this your instance comes up right so we need to go and choose the vpc in which we want to launch now uh, as we do in case of our uh, ec2 instances we can go ahead and launch rds also in our in our own vpc which we have defined and in most of the scenarios we keep database in the private subnet because we do not want it to be accessible from internet as such right that's why we keep it in the private subnet and only the web server or app server communicates with the rds now when whenever we are doing that we uh, we should choose a sub we should choose a you know our vpc and we should be choosing um, and we should choose the subnets accordingly now uh, let me go ahead and choose my vpc for the same okay so we will go ahead and look at our vpc configuration first so here is uh, my vpc right which uh, which we have seen in, uh, in other tutorials as well now this vpc which i have created it has got two public and two private subnets okay and i am going to choose one of the private subnets let's say prvc uh, basically because i am going to do multi easy deployment what happens in multi easy deployment is that two instances get deployed right and these two instances should be there in two different of uh, in two subnets which are there in two different availability zone so i will be setting it up in such a manner that my two instances get deployed in prv b and prv c subnet and both of them are there in two different availability zones right that's the funda as we have talked in uh, at other places as well in order to keep anything highly available we launch it in two different availability zones hence i'm going to choose two subnets both are both of them are private and i'm going to launch my rds instance okay now let us come here i'll go ahead and choose my vpc and then there's something called subnet group 
Now this is an important thing. Let us uh, let me show you how to create a subnet group. I'll just go ahead and open RDS service in a new tab. Okay, and on the left hand side you will have your subnet groups. I'll go ahead and say create DP subnet group. I'm going to give it a name. Group private is the same in my VPC and then I'm going to choose 1B and I need to see in 1B I have to choose 87F and choose 87F add and then in C I need to choose B06. So in C I'll choose B06 and add. So I've created a DB subnet group and in what what i'm essentially telling as part of that is uh, that this subnet group contains two subnets and both of them are there in two different availability zones i now i need to go and choose this particular thing here i'll just refresh this and i will go ahead and choose subnet group which i have created there okay and do i want to keep it publicly accessible no i don't want to and also even if I give it yes here it will not work because it would not work because the instances are going to be launched in private subnets and hence it's not possible that this would that this could be accessible from public so understand in case of RDS both of these factors would play a part right uh, if, if uh, it would be based on the subnet where you are placing your RDS instances also this particular attribute of being publicly accessible or not now you can see the availability zone drop down is disabled because it is multi AZ deployment and we have given what availability zone to be chosen with the help of the subnet group itself because subnet groups map to availability zones now we will choose that create a new security group we'll just leave it as it is we'll go ahead and give it uh, some db name we'll leave the port default two important things here db parameter group and option group now uh, when you go ahead and install your own database on, on a machine you will be able to change uh, you'll be able to change different configuration parameters at the db level uh, either in some files or by logging into that machine some mechanism would be there here in case of rds you would not be able to log into the instance where the db is installed right rather you you connect you only connect via some via one of the db clients like for mysql you can go ahead and use mysql workbench and execute our queries now many of the db related functions how to execute them from uh, you know via db client uh, detailed description of that is given on aws documentation go ahead and please refer that in case you have to do any db level activities also any other parameter or configuration changes which you want to do you can come and create parameter group and option group here and choose the custom parameter group and option group here while launching even after launch you can go ahead and change such things now any tag which you apply on this particular RDN instance do you want those tags to be you know to be uh, to be copied to the snapshots as well snapshots are nothing but the backup which you take from this RDS instance you can use this snapshots to later on create an RDS instance right from that basically from the backup you can create a uh, an RDS instance. Do you want to enable encryption? Yes or no? I, the the instance which I have chosen is very small. That's why you see it as no. Um, backup retention period. This one is really important to understand. Backup retention period is the period for which uh, for which the automated backups which are taken uh, would be kept for you. Right now, it can have value from zero to thirty five. If you specify zero, all the uh, the backup automated backup would not happen itself and maximum it can go up to 35 days now whatever duration you specify what it what it allows you is that any time from uh, which is like current time minus 5 minutes to that many days in in the past you can restore your db to at any to you know to any point in time for example if let's say today today is uh, uh, for example if today is 20th jan and you have given your backup retention period as uh, 10 days that means basically from 20th jan to 10th jan any at any point of time uh, you can you know to any point of time you can restore your db and you do not have to do anything the process of restoration is very simple you just go ahead choose a db say that you want to restore and specify the time which you want and rest of the things amazon does for you
there is a uh, uh, there's a daily backup which happens in order to facilitate this thing in addition to that all the logs for of your uh, database are also kept now the backup uh, window you can the daily backup window you can go ahead and choose you can select a window let's say i would ideally give choose a time when when the right read and write activities are least on my instance so let's say i'll give of something uh, late night uh, do you want to enable enhanced monitoring on your instance you can go ahead and choose you can uh, do it really really granular up to one level one second or you know uh, even whatever 30 seconds or whatever you want you can go ahead and do uh, i'm not enabling it for now auto minor version update if there is any uh, minor version update should it be or should it be applied automatically you can go ahead and say yes or no and weekly maintenance window also you can choose important thing the weekly maintenance window the time which you give here and the backup window should not be conflicting or should not be same so i'll go ahead and give it something over the weekend right okay probably saturday and i'll just say launch db instance so that's all you need to do and this gives your db instance so it is a multi az uh, db which we are trying to which we are trying to create it takes roughly uh, 15 to 20 minutes for a multi az deployment uh, to be up and running so i'm just going to pause this video and uh, we'll be back as it gets created so as you can see here we got our endpoint available remember we do not uh, we do not access rds using any ip address we always access an rds instance using the endpoint which we get so this is the endpoint and the port 3306 you can look at the, some of the events db instance got created and after that uh, <coughs> necessary modification is currently happening so that it changes to multi-az multi-az deployment basically two instances uh, should be there so uh, it should it should come up in a while in the meanwhile uh, what i did I went ahead and created uh, an instance, an EC2 instance in the public subnet because uh, the RDS which we have launched is there in private subnet. So we would not be able to connect directly from this machine. So I've created a public instance. You can think of this instance as a web server, right? So uh, we will be able to log in from internet to this web server. And then from the web server, we can connect to the, to the MySQL RDS, okay? <coughs> okay, uh, going ahead, uh, I want to quickly tell you that in what way uh, multi-AZ RDS works. So this is how the architecture is. Um, the, uh, I told you that there will be two instances running. One acts as primary, another one as standby. All the requests which come, which you which you send uh, to this particular endpoint, would be would be automatically redirected to the primary all the time, and you get the reply back. Uh, there will be a synchronous replication happening between primary and secondary or a standby in case the primary goes down all the traffic starts going to standby automatically and you do not have to do anything for that it is automatic failover and amazon does the necessary thing in order to bring back the instance uh, you know which went down as primary uh, it will do the needful in order to bring back an instance to uh, to basically replace that right so you don't have to do anything there <coughs> also there is a concept of read replica in place now in case you have uh, you have a lot of traffic which is read oriented you can go ahead and create read replicas these are these are separate db instances or separate rds instances which would have asynchronous replication from your master database or from your master rds there will be a separate endpoint in within your application you can direct any read type of traffic right now you can direct that read traffic to this endpoint so uh, i will show you there is an option to create read replica for example you select this go to instance actions and say create read replica right so it would be a completely separate rds instance and it would support only read operations okay there will be asynchronous replication between your rds instance and your read replica okay so the RDS instance which we launched, uh, it is available to be used now. And the meanwhile, this is the uh, EC2 instance which I've launched in the in the public subnet. I went ahead and installed Telnet package here so that I can connect. I can basically show you the I can show you the connectivity between between the public instance and the and the RDS. Okay, so let me just go and do this. So I'll I'll pick this endpoint from here and let me paste it uh just give a space between this and if it goes through then we are good okay it doesn't go through 
The reason is the security group which got created it is just open to a specific IP I'll go ahead and make it anywhere and come here and try to run it again sorry and that's it it goes through great